going for one person that's smashing it to one person that isn't guess who we're talking about again yes urgent that blow so um there's been an update since the last my last post or my what happened previously i'm sure as you guys are aware virgin is a bit of a oopsie decided to upload a screenshot of him matching a donation of 50 dollars that was you know probably done in good um in good faith but the optics weren't good especially when you marry up with some of the rants that he had he was doing on instagram stories about his friend's stores being looted and kids should hang their heads in shame and him bemoaning the fact of all these hype kids fetishizing per physical items over protesting which he actually helped to facilitate that whole culture but hey another argument for another day but things have developed since then um one development has been this girl called dookie Dukey Fott, who is supposedly a, a model for Fenty. I'm not really familiar. I'm not really um, f um, up to date with my current models, but she's meant to be a pretty big deal model in terms of working with Fenty. She's kind of come out of the woodwork and blasted Virgil. Said the following: "Virgil, how dare you? If y'all want, if y'all going to run up on anything today, hit up the Louis V and Off White store. He needs to personally feel it. Bloody hell! So she's going super hard on him, naming him by name." which I didn't really understand why she was doing so. But then I saw this post duh, 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 that was featured, I think, on Shade Room. Is it up there or is it gone? So this is the post, right? So I think this probably gives some context on the actual issue that's going on. So this Dookie Fort girl, is that how you pronounce her name? Dookie Tot, Dookie Fort, right? Dookie Tot, I don't know how you pronounce it. Let's call her Dookie. She obviously posted that How Dare You post on Twitter that I just mentioned. And then on her Instagram, I think it's captioned here. She says, I know we've had a conversation before, but all I want to say to you is match my energy. Please do not DM me about shit. Fuck you. Bloody hell, that's hard. She's going in ham. Which is funny because don't really see anybody else really again i don't follow anyone else that he's friends with i don't give a fuck right but from what i've seen in terms of reporting from other blogs because the other blogs are picking up bits of information right so i haven't really seen anybody else from his inner circle i don't know call him out in public about it um which i'm sure they're not going to do it's not within their it's not within their interest right he gives them seats at the front row shows he sees them product he gets them guest lists on to parties and shit i know probably not a good idea if you, if you want to be friends with him but it's interesting in this sort of situation people are still trying to maintain their relationships they're still trying to um you know they're still trying to maintain the status quo um which goes to show just how fucked up that system is and maybe just goes to show as well how detached from reality they are really and it is what it is isn't it but the next slideshow is the interesting one because it says um to my rich african friends let's show virgil abloh how black people support each other which you know questioning someone's blackness is like oh that's a big low blow and then the other one is like um, i think this might be a dm between the shade room and dookie girl where it says virgil has been emailing streetwear brands asking them to release statements to help virgil reclaim his blackness quote unquote they obviously said no which i'm not surprised if he probably did end up doing because i think somebody to be completely fair to be completely fair somebody in virgil's position you don't get to somebody you don't get to be a Virgil in the industry without being a bit conniving right without you know uh being very calculated about who you sit next to who you take pictures with um who you who you comment on in Instagram who you send shoes to uh what brand you support you don't get to be that person unless you're quite calculating conniving it is what it is isn't it um I've always again I've, I'm not a fan of him personally as a person because I've worked with the guy before so uh, you know that no more needs to be said in that regard but in terms of an operator in the industry and what he's done only props you cannot you cannot you can't say anything else right he's literally you know clawed himself up to the top of the mountain through pure hard work and grit yeah don't get me wrong he got a bit of an, a good little intro into the scene by aligning himself with kanye but everything else has been his pure hard work so if he's trying to save face and maintain his standing in the scene by having people advocate for him behind the scenes, cool, no matter, do what you have to do. But part of you thinks, you know, like, is, does, he, is he really does he really understand what he kind of done? Does he really understand maybe the errors of his ways? One thing, probably not. Is he aware of how he's perceived by people outside of his little bubble of friends? Probably not. And... 
is this something that he can actually learn and grow from or would this be just another opportunity for him to say hey those guys aren't my fans anyway let me just concentrate on my fans because there's a part of me that thinks as much of all this hysteria people have been his, you know, hysterical and moaning about us online for the most part the people that have been really chastising him are people that would never buy off white anyway right I think for the most part there's a certain segment of the fashion crew the fashion glitterati especially some of the media channels that cover him I'm going to mention it in a minute anyway with the Vanessa Friedman article in New York Times too. I don't really think she's a fan of his anyway but she's you know she pokes the bear and puts out these inflammatory clickbaity titles like is he the next Karl Lagerfeld insinuating stuff and you know these sort of like backhanded compliments but if you're Virgil you probably look at the situation and think okay now you definitely know who your fans are and you probably don't have any fans within the black community which is okay right there's a certain segment of the black community that won't be fans of him don't get that straight there's obviously a lot of artists that still like the stuff he does right um West Side Gun being a big example of it but I don't know what kind of lessons can be gained from it really in it it's just him doing something that he thought was cool at the time he thought he was standing up for his friends it didn't it didn't land right i think if he would have got the response he wanted from those posts online about supporting round two and sean weatherspoon i think he would have not said anything else right um i still think it was a bit of a misstep um in terms of like uh, reading the room right um everyone was really angry and irate the last couple of days i think it would have he would have been it would have been within his interest to just not said anything even when the loom was happening and it happened to be right on his doorstep just can remain mute and just put something out through your official channels that would have probably been the best way to go about it because you know like it or lump it even if you're not a fan of the guy he's a big deal right he's not he's responsible for a lot of jobs um he's you know he's keeping a lot of lights on in people's houses he's paying people's bills he's putting people through school he has to be a bit more responsible with how he goes about talking about things on social i think maybe this might be a lesson for him in that regard where he shouldn't just be cavalier and posting his opinion in that regard, isn't it? Because, you know, depending on how it gets received, it could have gone really south for him. Um, luckily, you know, it's not that big of a deal. You apologize, you keep it moving. But I thought that was interesting, right? Dickie kind of revealing, pulling back the curtain and saying, hey, this guy's going behind the scenes and, you know, trying to get people to step out and say something. And funnily enough, no one said anything. No, Hypebeast didn't report about it. I just know about it, didn't report it. I haven't checked anybody else because the main sites I usually read in terms of streetwear and cultural news, but there's been no word from Hypebeast, no word from High Snow Bite regarding anything that's happened there. I don't think even GQ mentioned anything regarding it. Again, protecting your relationships, I understand it, but how funny. And then the moment he puts out his statement, Virgil, which we're going to read now, um, all his friends all these bloody people that suck his dick when they go shows and now they're kind of curtailing oh, you've done so well giving him heart emojis and no one's really saying statements because no one wants to get you know called out so they're all putting emojis in it just to kind of keep it keep that you know help him out but in his darkest moment when he thought his career was over and he thought he was going to get cancelled where were these people where were they standing up for him i didn't see any posts and now the moment he puts out his post everyone's like oh i got your back i got your back i got your back the industry is so fake in it it's horrible man it really is but it's a good thing that he knows you know all these mates are still with him but god almighty part of him has to be thinking are you guys really my boys for real so let's see this is his response where's his response so this is his response let's read it because supposedly it's been quite funny i've heard some memes already about it but i've not actually read it myself so we're going to be reading it live and direct together so this is it on the screen he replies uh you know replying to the 50 dollar thing so this is the following let me start with a few central facts I'm already annoyed by the statement because every all the everything's done in lowercase. You already pissed me off, right? He's turned this into another exercise of design, right? Like, you're not gonna save the world with design, my friend. Like, it's too late for that. Um, you know, no man of fucking Eames chairs are going to um stop police officers from brutalizing us in the street. That isn't gonna happen. Um, yeah, yeah, whatever. Let me, let's just continue reading it. So it says, let me start with a few central facts. I'm a black man. A dark black man, like dark dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this your hero, bro? Is this your guy? Is this the person that you? <laughs> This guy's insane, bro. Like, honestly, I think there must be something that happens once you reach that kind of altitude on the mountain. It must just like make you dizzy, and you lose all sense of like you know you lose all you lose all your sense making apparatus, just goes all haywire, right? It's like a it's like a plane free falling, right? Like, dee -dee 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 -dee. All the alarms bells go off, but you're just you know 
blissfully unaware because you're already knocked out. The, the G force has already got you loopy. You're just waiting to hit, waiting for that impact, baby. But bloody hell, what? I'm a black man, a dark black man, like dark dark. Is that something that you? That's like something you say in a chat room, right? If somebody asks you ASL, <laughs> is that how you? Is that how he's giving up in the DMs? Like black black dark dark. <laughs> He's insane, bruv. The guy is an absolute nutcase, man. Like, legitimately nutcase. Like, who starts off a statement like that? I guess if you... <laughs> that's the problem, I think, right? That's why That's why some people who've um, far bigger reach than I have that are far more successful than I am, some people do advocate this idea that you should never respond to the mob. There is a certain segment of people that just, they refuse to apologize. They might acknowledge something they do wrong and explain it, but they'll never apologize, never bend the knee. Because when you bend the knee, you're always reacting to stuff that's been put out there from a certain segment of the population, right? There's a certain small segment of sort of like woke fashion Twitter that completely hates Virgil he can do no right with them right they accuse him of plagiarism he's not black enough he's got a white wife everyone he employs that off-white is white Louis Vuitton he only got it because he fucked over Kanye he's a coon there's a certain segment of that population that are never gonna like him and that's who he's speaking to so that's a problem with responding to the mob that's also the problem of not actually being on your P's and Q's and not having somebody vetting what you're posting on your Instagram stories and you throwing up there and supporting. That's the, he got himself in this, in, this, in this issue himself anyway. He, you know, he got himself in this. He's a big boy. He got himself out of it. But when you respond to the mob, you, you end up starting your statements like that. Like who starts a statement like that? I am a black man, a dark black man, like dark dark. That's some like slam poetry shit in it, like. That's some like Def Jam comedy shit, isn't it? That is, isn't it? Or is it just me? Like, what is this? Anyway, he continues. An average trip to a grocery store in Chicago, I fear I will die. <laughs> what does he think? He thinks like Glow Gang is going to be out there. Like King Von, the silent assassin is going to roll up and ask him for a size 8. And when the moment he says no, he's going to be lights out. Like, what does he think is going to happen? <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't live in, he doesn't live next to fucking O Block, does he? Like, you live in Chicago, but come on, right? Come on. Come on, brother. That's like me saying I'm from ENDS. Yeah, I'm from ENDS, but I'm not from ENDS. Do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> like I've got a concierge downstairs in my birthday. <laughs> Like, what is this? Oh, it's anyway. It's anyway <laughs> the risk of literal death is normal. Is the normal walk of life for almost. It's almost. Is it, sorry. The risk of literal death is the normal walk of life for almost live as I am walking on my tiptoes. <laughs> what? The risk of literal death is a normal walk of life for almost all my life as I'm walking on my tiptoes. The fact that you say literal as well just counts you out. That's just, that's when you can know he's been too much time with Gigi Hadid. Literal, homeboy. Yeah, anyway, um, when I apply for a job, I fear I won't get it. Guess, guess what? What are you talking about? What job? What? what? What job are you talking about? You work at Louis Vuitton. You don't, you don't apply to Louis Vuitton via LinkedIn, mate. You get headhunted for that. You, you're on a short list. You get flown out and, you know, wine and dine by whoever that, what's his name? Bernard Arnaud, Arnaud, however you pronounce his name, right? He wine and dines you. You get vetted by maybe his son. Oh, I don't know, some flacky kind of runs a rule and makes sure that you're the right person. They probably do a, you know, a background report on you. You know, these jobs you don't get through applying. Maybe in the past when you was, you know, doing his thing and starting up on Paris Vision, of course. But still, you know, you just put Kanye's name at the top of your CV. That's a lot of, that opens a lot of doors. What are you talking about? Going on as if like man's applying for, you know, stocking shelves at Tesco Express or something. Or not even that, like, you know, at some bougie shop somewhere in the middle of Notting Hill. Like, come on. It's my nature to be extra polite, but I'm extra polite because before I open my mouth, nine times out of 10, I, people judge. Is he trying to explain why? (laughs) 
<laughs> like, who's he speaking to in this statement? Who do you think he's speaking to? Like, legitimately, who's, who's he speaking to? <laughs> he says he's dark, dark. Then he says he's afraid of applying for jobs. He's afraid to go to the <laughs> grocery store. <laughs> oh, this guy is a nut, bro. This statement is nuts. There's more pages, right? Next one. Any interaction with the police could be fatal for me. Uh, what? What? When you come, when you step out of your Uber, or like what? Uh, a split second interaction I could have with them off white sneakers mean nothing. Or that I am. And he, look, look how he wrote off white as well. He put the TM there. This guy's a bloody clown. And then, uh, I'm her d- a designer of this, or I showed artwork at such and such gallery. It doesn't apply in the heat of an exchange. Sir, come here. Sends chills down my spine. When has anyone ever said, "Sir, come here" to Virgil Abloh? When he's what? When he's going the wrong way at a run- runway show, and he's you know they're trying to you know direct him to his seat. When Pharrell wants to have a chat with him at a festival somewhere, come on. When has anyone really said? Again, maybe I'm in the wrong for questioning his lived experience, bloody blah, blah blah. But come on, brother, this is a this is this is the problem. He's responding to the mob, and he's having to explain. He's having to kind of justify his existence in the most ludicrous way possible. The, this reminds me of like you know the soldier boy story when he that he does on uh is it on vlad the bow, 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 bow. it's like it might be some truth to it but come on bow, 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 like that something might ricochet and hit you in the head and you'd be dead too what are you talking about it continues 39 years of my life could be reduced in one second radio call to the police a tall black man was <sighs> He's calling himself tall. He's calling himself black, black. He's giving himself the TMs. This is what is this just him like patting himself on the back? I don't know. <laughs> I also know that this isn't just about race. <laughs> okay, what is it about, my friend? Let's see. My parents migrated, immigrated here from Ghana with zero dollars to their name. I'm lucky that they gave me the tools to grow up and have a successful career. I know that black people with fewer resources and less access to the privileges that I have are more vulnerable than me. So is this him trying to say in a backhanded way that the people that are complaining and trying to cancel him online are uneducated black people that come from single parent households or am I reaching? Yeah, probably reaching. Anyways, continue. Um, it says under black people, few resources and less access to privileges that I have have more uh, much more vulnerable than me. I also know that black women, queer, trans people go through struggles that are addictive. Jesus Christ, man. Look how many pleas he's having to cop because of one screenshot. He's now gone for the, he's now gone the LGBTQ route. It's like God Almighty, how disgusting is this, man? <laughs> so yeah, as a black person, I, I felt anger, sadness, pain every time one of us has held victim of prejudice or systemic racism. I'm proud to stand in solidarity with every movement to eradicate racism and police and violence and racism has to stop. It literally is killing us. It's ruining my store. You're taking my trainers, especially Sean Webber's been trainers too. Bruv, this guy's a nutcase, man. Legit. Next slide. Um, I feel sick that George Floyd and the government generations of black people have been inju- unjustly killed by police. Every police officer involved in their deaths needs to be charged and convicted unequivocally. Oh, thank you, Virgil. What we have done. Now we know that from you. Now we're going to charge them. Thank you for letting us know. Uh, we the people of the world should protest however we see fit. Next, I want to apologize. Okay. You could have got rid of all that fluff and just said this from the beginning, right? That all that, the copying of pleas is just nonsensical. You didn't need to do all that stuff. You could have just started right from here. I want to apologize. And I would even argue again, I'm not a fan of the dude, but I would argue that you don't need to apologize, right? he posted that screenshot there was a re- there was a reason behind it the the story goes you're matching someone's donation it is what it is you read wrong into it i'm still going to be donating behind the scenes leave it as that let people make their own assumption because the people that were killing him anyway don't they're not even fans of his and now he's been res- re- you know he's been bloody reduced to making these long-winded fucking ig thought statements online it's just god damn anyway says i apologize that my comment um comments yesterday appeared as if my main concerns are anything other than full solidarity with the movements against police violence racism and inequality i want to update all systems that don't address our current needs it has been my personal motive operandi in every realm i touch 
Yesterday I spoke about how my, my stores and stores of friends were looted. I apologize that it seemed like my concern to those stores outweighed my concern for our right to protest injustice and express our anger and rage in this moment. I also joined the social media chain of friends who are matching five dollar donations. I apologize that that what that appear to some as if that may be only donation to these important causes. So let's read that again. I also joined a social media chain of friends who are matching fifty dollar donations. I apologize that appear to some as if that was my only donation to the important causes. I'm not a fan of the public shaming when it comes to donations. I think donations and charity um and any kind of community work should be done you know privately um i'm not a fan of same when it comes to religion i'm not a fan of people who wear their um faith or their religion on their sleeves right who the kind of person that prays really loud um i'm not a fan of that i think if anything that makes me more suspicious of your motives and makes me think that you're hiding something similar with some person that's always rabbing on going on and on about their boyfriend or girlfriend right usually they're a bit of a cunt right um the same with this you shouldn't be shamed into disclosing what you're donating to a cause regardless of what's going on in the world that's just regard that's just nonsense it's no one's business um but again it's just a shame that he put himself in this situation to begin with because he was so bothered about people looting a store that wasn't even his to begin with right that's that's the mad thing it wasn't even a louis vuitton or white store it was stores that he was kind of connected to i'm not sure if he's even part of rsvp gallery anymore um round two with Sean Weatherspoon is he an investor in it I don't know but he was so bothered about stores that, oh, that are not even his that led to this situation now he's having to cop pleas and pray for forgiveness and start his statement saying I'm black black like god almighty man he says um next slide uh, is this the last one? Oh, so many bloody hell! He says a lot here. As many have said, the buildings are brick. The buildings are brick and mortar, and material things can be replaced. People can't. Black lives matter in this moment, and those things don't. You, you, you're still allowed to make a point. Um, you're still allowed to um, have reservations about whether or not looting stores owned by uh, black creatives, right? is the right way to go about enacting change you are allowed to question that if you're a business owner you're within your right the same way you're within your right to stand guard and you know threaten to shoot anyone that tries to trespass your property it's just the way you do it right that's it you're allowed to say anything you want to say especially if it's your own business people can go and eat a dick if they don't agree but it's just his approach right that's the problem with it he's so um quick to come out with statements and say he's with the kids and all this nonsense but then when it comes to reading a room and kind of gauging people's sentiment that's where he kind of felt a bit on his flat in his face there he should have just not said anything to begin with he should have just kept his counsel maybe spoken to his publicist or i don't know whoever was in his team and thought of a way to kind of approach it in the right way or just kept it storm this is the one moment where we don't want to see look especially if you're not that politically minded and i don't think he is i don't think he's well versed in what's actually going on um in terms of social justice um it, it, that's why it comes across like this because it will come across a bit disingenuous because you're not really engaged with the issues that are happening in everyday life which is okay you know he's a big designer he's doing his thing but this is this is what you get when you try and play both sides i guess in that regard anyway it says people who criticize looting often do so as a way to make them seem like our fight against injustice isn't legitimate i did not realize that the ways my comments accidentally contribute to that narrative as i mentioned yesterday if looting eases the pain and furthers overall mentioned missions it's within a good standing with me <clears throat> does need to be said really don't it it's just it is what it is <clears throat> i don't know um I'm fortunate enough to be able to rebuild my stores and I'm seeking out anyone who needs help rebuilding, especially those if, whose livelihood are suffering f due to COVID. Again, these are all just copying mad please, man. It just doesn't need to be. It's just, oh, it just feels disgusting. Isn't it? He's having to beg for forgiveness like this, but hey, donation I, I posted last night was solid solidarity with a group of Miami friends of a chain posting about coming together for their little community. I can understand your frustration. <coughs> Sorry, my head is blowing up here. It says, I, <coughs> it. It says I can understand if you think my contributions were limited to $50. Purely false when it comes to total 
I donated 20500 to bail funds and other causes related to this movement. Cool, do you think that's very commendable? But again, he doesn't need to post it. But I guess he's at that point that, oh my God, this is too much content. There's too much words here. I can't read this whole thing. No, I can't read everything. But he, so he apologized, basically, I guess. It's still going. God almighty. Okay, yeah, I can't, I can't read all that. The last, the last comment chapter here says, I'm an agent of change. When you see me in my space city restaurant on the bench of Mercer in Italy, bar, bar, so in pig. <laughs> he started it by telling you he's black black and now he's listing all the cool places he goes and hangs out this guy is a fucking nutcase man like credit to him man he's an absolute nutcase uh, Pigal in line at Dumbo in LA or Fairfax or at the end of a runway show in Paris know that I'm carrying a flag to redefine the box that me as a black person I've been put in I lead with love and move with the respect everyone I've met, ever met Virgil TM uh, <laughs> pick your pick your heroes wisely man I say to kids I've got nothing more to say in that regard this guy's made me tired 